my number one shoe of 2021 is the So let's jump straight into this one. I have my top five shoes here of the year in terms of daily trainers and I'm going to be ranking them starting with number five all the way up to number one. Um, so my favourite shoe of the year. Before we get into this video, I would love to hear what your favourite shoe of the year is. Maybe it's one that I've got here. Uh, maybe it's something different. So yeah, put them in the comments below and I'd also love to hear what is the one shoe that you're looking forward to getting your hands on maybe next year. Let's get into my top five running shoes of the year, starting with number five, which is the Hocker Clifton 6. So with all of these shoes today, I'm going to go over how I've used them, um, who I'd recommend them for, and finally an upside and a downside to each shoe or a like and dislike if you like. So let's start off with the uses. So yes, this shoe is actually from 2019, I believe, when this was released. Um, you can get your hands on the latest iteration of the Clifton lineup from Hocker, but I went for the 2019 uh, model just simply because it is that little bit um, cheaper. I think I picked this up for about between 60 and 80 pounds. I can't remember exactly. Um, bought it at the very start of 2021, so I've had it for a long time now. Um, in terms of uses, this is my go-to shoe when it comes to um, my recovery run. So say if I've had a really big session or my legs are beaten up from a race, um, for example, after the 50 kilometer ultra I did this year, the Clifton 6 was pretty much the only shoe that I could run in for about a week um, after that event, just because it protects the legs really well, um, has no sort of ground contact feel, and yeah, it's great for sort of shins, knees, hips, that sort of thing, in terms of protecting yourself from the impact related um, fatigue from running. So yeah, I'd recommend this shoe to anyone who's looking for sort of a softer ride, a more max cushion shoe in their daily trainer, um, and also somebody who's looking to get a bargain really, because yeah, you can pick these up pretty cheap, and a top tip for buying running shoes is, um, maybe look at the previous iteration of the model, so um, maybe the, the one from the previous year or two years ago, they're still great shoes, um, and if you got on well with them, definitely um, pick them up a second time. Um, yeah, you can just save yourself a bit of money, and this one has been a great example of that. Um, yeah, got my money's worth out of this one, and it's been great for those sort of recovery runs. So that's the Clifton 6 in at number 5. We're done with that one. Moving on to number four is the On Cloud Stratus um, from On Running. In terms of the uses, this has been my go to long run shoe when I'm focused on time on my feet. Um, so, if I'm doing a faster long run, I sort of go for a carbon plated shoe like a Vaporfly or an Alphafly. Um, but for a long run where I'm not worried about the pace, so it's more of an easy effort. Um, so when I was training for the ultra marathon where I was focused more on time on the feet, um, this shoe was great. It's uh, yeah, really good for those longer runs. Um, I really enjoyed the ride. I've also used it for my sort of warm ups. So before a race I would wear this shoe um, and also for walking actually. If I go on a family walk, um, this is a great shoe for, for just walking around. So it's a good shoe for a lifestyle shoe almost that you can do your running in but you can also work um, walk to and from the office, that sort of thing in this shoe. So the real standout point for this shoe was its sort of transition in the foot strike. So I'd recommend it to anyone who is a heel um, to mid foot striker like myself. I tend to land more on the, the mid foot or heel of the shoe and I get a really nice transition. So when I land on the heel, it gives me a really nice transition through the foot strike. Um, and this cloud technology that they have in this shoe is, is yeah, it's really good and that's probably the standout feature So I'd recommend it to anyone who's more of a heel striker really if you're if you land on your toes It might not be the best shoe for you um, But yeah, that's how I've used it and who I would recommend it to so on to the upside and downside The downside for me is this one is a little bit too heavy for my speed work You can do speed work in it and I have done um, But I tend to favor other shoes for that sort of work just because the weight in this one is a little bit on the heavy side, but the upside to this shoe is definitely the ride, like I was talking about, a really, really enjoyable shoe to put on your feet, and every run I've done in it so far, I've, I've really enjoyed. So yeah, the On Cloud Stratus from On Running is number four. Moving on to number three. Um, in number three is the Rebel V2 from New Balance. Now, I believe this is actually gonna be a lot of people's favorite shoe of the year, but for me, only number three. Um, I've used this for sort of my shorter runs, um, speed work, it's a very very soft and responsive shoe. Um, I tend not to take it over distances for any further than 12, 14k, sort of the longer stuff, um, just because it is such a soft shoe and um, yeah for me it doesn't have any support so 
Um, I tend not to use it for the longer stuff just because I prefer a bit more support on those sort of runs. But this has been great um, for my easy runs, my speed work on the shorter side of things. I've even raced the sort of 5k in this shoe and it's performed really well. So who would I recommend this shoe? Um, pretty much everyone will get on well with this shoe but it would be more suited to people who do shorter stuff. Um, so for me, I, like I said, I probably wouldn't take this further than 10 kilometers now having other shoes in my rotation. So if you're somebody who runs sort of five and 10K runs, maybe two, three, four times a week, this is a great shoe to add to your rotation. Um, yeah, lovely, soft, um, responsive ride. Um, and I believe this is probably gonna be a lot of people's top shoe of 2021. But for me, it was just a little bit too soft. So that was my downside. Um, I prefer a little bit more structure, but then again, it is a really, really fun ride. And um, yeah, I've never run in a shoe that is so soft and responsive. So you really sink into that midsole and you can really feel a, a big toe off um, sort of repul repulsion, is that a word? Anyway, moving on to number two. So which shoe is gonna take the top spot? In at number two, it's between the Hocker Mac 4 and the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. The number one spot goes to the Hocker Mac 4. Um, I'll talk about that in just a minute, but in the number two spot is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this shoe. I haven't had it that long, so maybe if I'd had it a little bit longer, it would have taken the top spot. Nothing really to report in terms of dislikes of this shoe. I absolutely have, have loved every single run in it so far. Um, so I've used it for my easy runs all the way up to my track workout So it's definitely a shoe that suited more to the sort of speed work hence the name speed um, So if you're somebody who's looking for a shoe to do their tempos um, their interval work in um, This is a great shoe for you to pick up in terms of who I'd recommend this shoe to pretty much everyone is going to get on well with this um, yeah, it's a very versatile shoe, very comfortable, um, responsive, it has a nice amount of cushioning. So yeah, it's got, got a lot going for it um, that a lot of people are going to get on well with. So I pretty much recommend it to everyone. So on to my downside and upside for this shoe. Start with the downside is it's not the best in the wet condition. So I found it can lack a little bit of uh, traction. Um, say when the track is a bit damp or the roads are a little bit damp from the rain um, So yeah, that's the only reason why really I've chosen the Mac 4 over the endorphin speed is just because it lacks a little bit of traction in The wet and that's my only downside for this shoe The upside for this shoe is it's pretty much a racing shoe that you can use for your daily training um, So this one has a nylon plate and it's the only one of my shoes in my daily rotation that has a plate in it um, but because it is nylon, it's, a, it's slightly more um, forgiving than, say, carbon-plated shoes. So the, my definite upside for this shoe is it's basically a shoe that you can race in, um, but you can also use for your daily training, which is a great feeling. If, if you're struggling to get out on a run, to be able to pick up this shoe and take it out, um, yeah, it really motivates me to get out because it is like putting on your race day shoes. So my number one shoe of 2021 is the Hocker Mac. Four. Um, yeah, I've really, really got on well with this shoe. I picked it up at the start of the year and I've done about a thousand kilometers in it. Um, and despite my um, first impressions being it wasn't gonna be super durable because a lot of this um, midsole here is, is exposed. There's not a lot of harder rubber on the bottom. Um, it's done really well in terms of durability. Yes, it's worn down a little bit here and here, but I've put yeah a lot of miles into this shoe, about a thousand kilometers now, and it is still going strong. Um, the reason why I picked this as my favorite shoe of the year is just mainly because of its comfort. Um, I've never worn a shoe that is as comfortable as this one. Um, Hocker have really, really nailed the lockdown of this shoe. Um, it just sits on top of the foot. And when I talk about comfort, it is mainly that upper. Uh, my toes come right to the very end of this um, toe box. My heel feels nice and secure. There's a great amount of padding, um, but also they've not made a heavy shoe, which some people, some shoe companies do when they look for comfort. In terms of uses, I mainly use this as my mileage shoe. So I use it for my easy runs. Um, you can also do some speed work. So I did a nice 10 mile uh, tempo in it the other day. And it, it does well at that sort of effort as well because it is such a lightweight shoe. Um, you've got a nice balance in the midsole between cushioning and this pro fly. So it's a sort of a double um, sectioned midsole here. So this is sort of more hardened EVA and this is sort of a softer cushioned, um, more responsive EVA. I'd recommend this shoe to pretty much everyone. Um, 
Again, anyone who's looking for sort of a shoe that you can basically do everything in, your speed work, um, you can even race in this shoe because it is so light. Um, and its comfort is above and beyond any of the shoes I've tried today um, by a pretty long way, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know what it is about this shoe. It just sits on the foot perfectly. Um, the ride is great. And yeah, I can't fault it at all. But saying that, if I did have to give an upside and a downside, the downside would be it's not quite as responsive as some of the shoes I've tried this year. So for example, the Endorphin Speed and the Rebel V2 are much more responsive than the Hocker Mac 4. Um, just the way the midsole is designed. That has not really been a problem for me because I've used this mainly as easy run shoe. And yeah, it has a great, as I was saying, it has a great balance between being um, soft but also responsive and also protecting the legs so yeah this has basically been the ideal shoe for me in 2021 i'm really looking forward to picking up the next iteration of the mac 4 which i believe is either called the mac 5 or the supersonic um they're going to change some of the the midsole to make it even more responsive so that'll be good um, but yeah, my upside is, it's the best shoe that I've tried this year. So there we go, the Hocker Mac 4 takes the top spot in my top 5 daily shoes of the year. Don't forget to comment down below your favourite shoe of the year, as well as the shoe you're most looking forward to. I've also got a competition running live on my Instagram um, that leads up until Monday, um, where you can win a hat of your choice by Team Varga. So head over to my Instagram, there's a link down below. Follow me there, follow Hocker and comment a couple of people on the Instagram post to enter yourself in a cho in, to enter um, for a chance to win one of these hats. And yeah, got the Adidas Takumi Sen 8 coming next week, so expect a review of that one. Um, but until then, aspire to run and run to inspire and we'll see you with another video soon. Bye-bye.